Welcome to the Trust in Industrial AI video series, where we explore how to implement AI with speed and confidence in safety critical industries. In this first episode, we'll start high level and explore some of the new opportunities, as well as some of the new risks and challenges of implementing industrial AI. We will also discuss why it's so important to build safe AI from the beginning and to ensure systems are trusted by people, organizations, and societies. I'm your host, Martina, and today I'm joined by Kenneth and Christian. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Martina. Great to be here. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks. Great. I think we'll start uh, with a big question to you, Kenneth. Uh, why should AI be a key discussion point in every top management group, especially those working in uh, critical infrastructure industries? Mm. It's a great question, and a question that we have a lot with over uh, customers these, day these days, um, and it comes up a lot. And one of the things that, when we have this conversation, we reflect on what actually went on with uh, digitalization and Industry 4.0, you remember that, uh, 10, 15 years back? And uh, did it deliver on its promise? And the answer to it in our conversation is that partially. Mm -hmm. right? And there were a few things missing here. And, and uh, why is that? And this is particularly for the industry where you have assets in play, maritime, oil and gas, the renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of what I get out of these conversations are that we, we didn't really transform. We mm. digitized existing processes. And we perhaps also underplayed the importance of people in this. It was not only mm. about technology, but also about people. Uh, and it ended up being a big uh, IT investment with cost overruns and what have you. So a few things kind of went missing, but by, by a long while, we also uh, get something out of it. So what makes AI different this time uh, and why does it matter for, uh, for, for top leaders? Uh, AI kind of changes the game in many respects. It, it goes much deeper in terms of what you can do with it in terms of the analytics you can do, but also the level of automation you could do. So it, it is a game changer in many respects and for our customers and uh, for the people we talk to, this has to be reflected. What is the risk mm. and what is the opportunity space that this presents to us? Yeah, so balancing the, the risk and reward uh, aspect. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you, Christian, you've also been in a lot of these uh, customer conversations. And what are some of the specific use cases that are being discussed? Well, there are, there are many examples, and we see more and more examples and use cases every day, really. And for industrial applications, I think especially maybe optimization is very important. So using AI to then find a new design solution or to operate a system optimally. So for instance, in, in energy to predict supply and demand and then be able to utilize the energy system in a smart way using AI, it's, it's a good use case. Uh, also automation, so AI is a great enabler for autonomy and we see this in maritime. So their AI is used for, uh, for situational awareness to kind of be the ears and eyes of the vessel. Mm. Uh, but it's also used for navigation, for route planning, for control. And when you put this together, then you can achieve high levels of, of autonomy, right? Mm. Uh, another very important area is predictive maintenance. So this is where we really want to determine when is a good time to do an inspection or a repair. And then AI is used for, for instance, anomaly detection, or you can use models that can predict when a failure is likely to occur, for instance. And then this is, this is really about kind of balancing that, okay, what's the, the cost of doing an inspection and repair mm. versus the risk of not doing yeah. it. And I think the, this is interesting <clears throat> because the, the link between risk and AI is, is interesting because we often say that, okay, if you bring AI into a system, well, then you create new risks and that's, yeah. that's true. Mm. But if you really think of it, like predictive maintenance, increasing autonomy, at the end of the day, these are things that actually increase safety and reduce risk. So if you think about you know, these use cases where you use AI on an offshore platform, it will have also a huge positive impact also on the risk and not only on the, the performance. Mm. But I, I should end also by pointing out that, you know, okay, there are, these are different application areas, but this also, this is what we call kind of special purpose AI solutions or technologies that are, are being used. And it's, it's a bit different than generative AI language models like Copilot and ChatGPT, which is also, very useful, but maybe more use back office as part of the business operation. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, we have different industrial application areas, but it's also using different types of uh, AI. Mm. So there are a lot of potential benefits, but how do we ensure that they actually get uh, the return on these investments? 
Yeah, and that's where we see uh, companies and industries are at different levels in terms of how well it has adopted these, uh, these new technologies. Mm. Um, um, and uh, many are kind of in the awareness stage. Others have started to experiment and doing some pilots. Uh, and then you see some is starting to put it into production. Um, so it's a big variance here. And of course, it has to be addressed uh, in a proper way. So the earlier you can address uh, the issues, um, the better it is to, to tackle them and not wait until you got into the implementation, because then things get costly. Mm -hmm. So managing the risk and understanding the opportunity space, but also the risk in the early phase is essential to really reap the benefit out of it. And that has to be done as you, as you walk through the various stages. Mm. I think to add on to that, I think that's, uh, that's, that's right. And that's what we see. We did a study amongst energy professionals, where we also saw that quite many are now creating AI solutions and piloting and testing this. But there are not that many that are kind of mm. taking it really into mm. operation, right? Because and we see this, well, it's in energy, but also in maritime and healthcare. And these are sectors where the consequences of an AI failure can yeah. be quite severe. So taking the step from a prototype and into operation where we really have to trust that it works as intended, that can be a, a big step, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so actually, not trusting is a barrier to real yeah, implementation. Uh, yeah. 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 Are there other barriers that we typically see? Yeah, there are, and it's basically a combination of barriers, I think. So, uh, of course, it's the cost issue uh, with, with these technologies. Also, now a lot of uncertainty around regulation and the AI regulation, uh, cybersecurity concerns, and also like a natural resistance to change. You might need mm. new skills, new competences yeah. as well. So it's difficult to say kind of in isolation what are the barriers, because it's not only about the data, the algorithm, the model. It's also about the people and the processes, right? Hmm. And a bit back to kind of the issue with, with trust, what are some of the things organizations can do to enhance the trust of these new applications? Well, I think uh, there's a nice saying in, in AI that you cannot make AI safe. You have to make safe AI. Hmm. Hmm. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. And it, it's not only about safety, it's about security and more generally about what we call trustworthy AI. So, okay, one thing is to, to create something, a new piece of technology, and then try to make it trustworthy. That's, that's very difficult. Mm. So it's, it's much better to try to build trust into the system from the beginning. Mm. And how you do that technically, that could maybe be a topic for, for a different day. But I think if you ask about what organizations can do to really mm. be, be prepared, I think, first of all, making sure that, that AI is a top management priority. I think that's important. Mm. Mm. Uh, also to, to understand, okay, what do you want to achieve with AI, really? And, and what, then what are, the, what are the relevant types of AI to, to consider? Also consider, I think, about the, what are the risks involved and how is that compared then to the potential value creation? And then you have more technical things like the data. Do you have access to the right data with the right quality? Do you have the right cybersecurity controls in place? Uh, and also now to really look uh, or monitor the, the development of the AI regulation to ensure compliance. I think that's, mm. that's important. And in the end of the day, also making sure that kind of the, the connection between the technology and, and people, there's uh, a lot to do also there. Mm. Absolutely. And those, those topics are actually the ones we cover throughout this whole, whole series and deep dive uh, into it. Uh, but if we start with the first one, top management priority, what's uh, DNV's top management uh, commitment to AI? Mm. So uh, this is very close to the sort of customers and the industry that DNV is, is serving. So it naturally become a topic, an important topic for DNV. Um, so uh, and it's closely connected to the purpose of, of DNV safeguarding life, property, and environment. Mm. Uh, so and we have for for decades been committed to to research and serving the industry in, in its wider purpose with the research that we do. So we we early on have invested in, in really digging deep in our research uh, group to look into uh, to AI. And we have uh, a large number of researchers that is dedicated to this, this topic and to understand it and how it actually have implications on the industries that we, that we serve. Uh, so uh, that's a strong commitment uh, that we have. And obviously that, that also goes into how we implement AI uh, into our own services uh, as we are delivering value to our customers, but also help our customers mm. to adopt AI in a safe and responsible and trustworthy uh, manner. Mm. And if you could give our audience one final advice, what should they 
what should they think about? I think first and foremost is to be curious and be open-minded and really exploring the potential that AI uh, introduces, mm -hmm. but then also then being very clear about how you're going to manage the risk and address these issues as early as you can, because then you can really uh, quicker move through the, the, the various, various stages and getting into successful implementation and managing the, the cost also. Mm. I think a key takeaway for our audience is, uh, is definitely make safe AI from the beginning. Yes, yeah. definitely. Cool. Thank you very much, both of you, for these great insights. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. If you have any questions or want to learn more about how DNV can support you with safe application of industrial AI, then please visit our website. Thank you. Mm -hmm.